Hi, welcome to episode two of the Protecting Your Family's Future podcast. My name is Richard Chamberlain. Today we're going to be talking about the five most important estate planning documents that you need. The first document that people think of when they think about estate planning is a will or a last will and testament. That's essentially a document that says that when you pass away, for the assets that are subject to probate, we're going to talk in a later episode about what in the world probate is, but for the assets that are subject to probate, this is who should be in charge. That person is called the executor, and these are the people who should receive those assets, and those are called the beneficiaries. So most people are familiar with what a will is, and that's really uh, an estate planning document that any person needs if they own any kind of property at all. The next document is a trust or a living trust. Uh, in a lot of ways, a living trust can be a will substitute. It will say uh, who receives your property and uh, who should be in charge of managing the property. Uh, unlike a will, it is not subject to probate. Uh, but it also works during your lifetime uh, so that if you become incapacitated, the assets that are in the trust can be managed for you by the people that you choose. So very powerful document that a lot of people need to consider as part of their estate plan. The next document uh, is a general power of attorney. Now, if you are over the age of 18, then you need one of these uh, because even if you don't own any property at all, a general power of attorney is going to address issues that need to be addressed. Uh, so generally speaking, the general power of attorney gives legal authority to someone that you've chosen or several people uh, to handle things for you. Uh, handle really anything of a non-healthcare nature. So, for example, dealing with bank accounts, dealing with investments, real estate, also handling personal matters for you, like dealing with insurance or Social Security or any government agencies, handling legal claims on your behalf. So making sure you have someone who has the legal authority to manage things for you is going to be important and you do that with a general power of attorney. Now the fourth document that anybody needs, again if you're over the age of 18, is a healthcare power of attorney. So this is going to be similar to the general power of attorney but it's going to be limited to healthcare matters. So if you are at the point where you are not capable of making your own informed healthcare decisions, then the people that you name as your healthcare agents in the healthcare power of attorney, they can make those things for you. So dealing with uh, issues like where will you receive treatment? What kinds of treatment will you receive or not receive? Reviewing your medical records, signing consents authorizations, uh, even including uh, decisions dealing with end-of-life issues. And that brings us to the last document, and that is a living will. So a living will is an advanced health care directive. It deals in Ohio specifically with uh, situations where a person is uh, in a permanently unconscious state or has a terminal condition uh, and that is where death is likely to occur within a relatively short amount of time, unless something is done to prolong that. And in the living will, uh, the declarant, the person who makes that living will, says that they would not like to have life-sustaining treatment. They don't want their dying artificially prolonged. So those are the five most important documents that go into a complete estate plan. Uh, as we continue on uh, with our podcasts, we'll go into a lot more specific information about each one of these. 
but I wanted to give you a good introduction to all of them in this early episode, and I hope it was helpful for you. Thanks.